BFA support. This is the first in a new series of WebExes hosted by the Barks and Bucks FA to support grassroots clubs in navigating FA regulations, share best practice and receive updates from the county FA. My name is Alistair Kay. I'm the Football Services Manager at Barks and Bucks and I'll be hosting these sessions with support from various colleagues throughout the season. To spend an hour once a month looking in depth at one area of running a football club, focusing on some of the governance and infrastructural aspects which have not had the attention that they've deserved. Over the next 12 weeks, we'll cover a variety of governance related topics, and the sessions will be hosted by the Football Services Department here at Barks and Bucks. The topics have already been circulated to clubs and leagues, although these are subject to change if a particular issue comes up throughout the season. If you have any suggestions, however, in the meantime, Please tweet me using the hashtag BBFA support or email me directly at alistair.k at barks barksfacom Each month I'll send a reminder email to club and league secretaries confirming the topic and what officials the content will be most relevant to. This season we'll cover topics from volunteer and player recruitment to club structure and financial planning, safeguarding and handling complaints, and the first three issue, uh, sessions in particular will focus around FA disciplinary procedures. I'd expect this session to last around 45 minutes. Uh, for those of you who did sit in on the very first WebEx back in August, this is a re-recording of that session and will focus just purely on uh, the FA disciplinary regulations. A new page on our website specifically for BBF support where recordings of each session, slides and support materials can be found. I'm also conscious that not everyone was able to subscribe to the calendar invite first sent out to clubs at the beginning of the season, so we will look to add calendar appointments for Outlook, iCalendar, and so on. This first session is going to look at FA Discipline Administration. So we're going to cover the yellow and red card procedures, appealing red cards, and do a practical demonstration around the uh, whole game system and how to go about doing some of these functions. We'll also then just cover some accumulation charges uh, and other disciplinary charges which clubs may face throughout the course of the season. I'll run through this as the first session just because it is the most uh, common aspect that clubs will have to face throughout the course of the season and will probably fulfil that bulk of secretarial work for club secretaries. recap some of those key disciplinary regulations, procedures and timelines that clubs need to complete throughout the season. Firstly, red and yellow cards. So referees should be reporting uh, discipline to us within two days of the game. So that includes all caution and red cards and any extraordinary incidents which occur throughout a match. Now, I'm conscious that this hasn't always happened uh, quite within this time frame in the past. And we are actually going to be introducing new tracking measures this season to monitor report dates submitted uh, by the referees and take action against those referees who consistently fail to submit reports within this time frame. Given the stakes, of, uh, um, given what's at stake for clubs, namely additional fines and misconduct charges, if you fall foul of playing players under suspension and so forth, actually we feel it's only right that we try and hold referees to the same standards. Referee does submit the report to us within two days of the game. Those cards will be charged that same day by the county FA. Some of that is automated, but those ones which we do review, we will always make sure we process every card that's received on the day it comes through. Be notified immediately via the whole game system, and you'll receive an email um, to your club secretary designated email address prompting you to log on to the whole game system and letting you know that there is a new notification available. Aspects that need to be completed by the club in order to resolve a discipline case is that the case needs to be acknowledged. And this has to be done within seven days for red cards and within 14 days for yellow cards. Uh, those deadlines are from the date of the case being raised and charged by the county FA. Second aspect is that invoices then need to be paid within 14 days. So invoices are generated automatically on a Tuesday night into Wednesday. So uh, throughout the course of the season, you can expect to see um, emails and notifications come through from the whole game system on a Wednesday morning if you have any disciplinary cases to be paid. 
What this also means is that if everything's going on well and referees are submitting their reports within that two days, you should be invoiced for a case the Wednesday after the game. You do need to, though, watch out that if uh, we have had a delay in the referee submitting their report to us, so actually you're not receiving notification of a charge for a case until the Wednesday or Thursday, actually you won't be invoiced for that case until the following week. Deadlines are quite key. Um, I know I appreciate that there's some quite tight timeframes there, particularly for acknowledging a red card. Uh, and if you fail to uh, meet those deadlines, there is a 25% late fee which will be added. So if you're looking at a regular caution, £10 uh, admin charge associated with that, if you fail to either acknowledge it within 14 days of the case being raised or pay the invoice within 14 days of the invoice, uh, you will receive a £2.50 late fee. That then goes up to about £7.50 for some of the more serious red card offences. Uh, with the invoices, the payment deadline is 14 days of the invoice being raised. So you always get two weeks of payment on an invoice. Now, uh, if you do miss one of those deadlines and you do get a late fee applied, it's crucial that you uh, make that late fee as soon as possible and uh, acknowledge the case if you haven't already done so. Being that if that fee then goes unpaid uh, after seven days, um, you will receive notice that actually the player and the club will face a suspension. Uh, that suspension will take place from the following Monday. So in effect, uh, if you do miss deadlines, you do get a late fee applied. You've got about 10 days to resolve it. Otherwise, the player and the team or the club could face suspensions. Suspensions for red card offences. Uh, regular red card offences, they take place seven days after the date of the offence. Now that is regardless of whether you receive notification from the county FA or not. As I said, we're trying to um, get tighter on making sure that we receive the referee reports on time and that those cases are charged as soon as they're received. But regardless of whether you receive that notification from us, if a player gets sent off, it is vital that seven days later they are sat out of the next game. Now, if you are playing uh, midweek games in between those, let's say a player gets sent off on a Saturday and you actually have a game on the Wednesday, uh, either to catch up or for a cup competition, that player is actually eligible to take part in that midweek game. The suspension will take place from the following Saturday. Red cards, offences, the suspensions are from the relevant match-based disciplinary category only. Uh, accumulate, suspensions relating to accumulation of yellow cards will be from that match-based disciplinary category and um, may also only apply to the relevant cup competition. Brought in so that uh, it gives players more opportunity to take part in FA Cup and FA Bars matches, but if you commit repeat yellow card offences in those competitions, actually you'll get a competition-specific suspension for those. Just to explain the match-based disciplinary categories, uh, they are on the right-hand side of the screen and they generally relate to the category of football which is being played. means that if you get sent off in a Saturday game and you are also dual registered with a Sunday or a midweek team, while you are serving that suspension for the red card on a Saturday, you're actually allowed to continue playing for the other teams. You're only suspended from the day of the week effectively that you received the card in. It's a Saturday, Sunday, midweek, uh, which covers all midweek days. Representative, uh, if you're a county rep team player, veterans football, schools football, and then higher education. As I said, for yellow card accumulations, there's also additional categories for the FA Cup or FA Bars. You commit a more serious level offence or you commit misconduct um, when you're not a player. So if you've been substituted or if you are a member of the technical area, then your suspension is from all county FA football, which basically means all match-based disciplinary categories. If you have any doubt, however, please uh, either contact the county FA office or check the suspension notice on whole game, which will contain details of which category uh, suspension applies to. Now, the suspensions will remain on the whole game system until the club have added the relevant suspension matches. I will cover this in a bit more detail but it's just to highlight that although a player may have served a, the suspension, missed the relevant number of games, 
that suspension will remain showing as active on the whole game system until those matches have been added. A couple of times now about the accumulation of cautions. Uh, this relates to individual players' uh, tallies for cautions throughout the course of the season. So if an individual player receives five cautions by the 1st of December of the playing season, they'll receive a one-match suspension. They receive 10 cautions by the second Sunday in April, two-game ban, and then they receive 15 cautions before the end of the playing season, they'll be suspended for three games. If the player manages to go beyond that and reach 20 cautions before the end of the season, uh, they'll face a formal misconduct charge from the county FA. Those thresholds is met after the deadline. So, for example, you reach your fifth caution after the 31st of December. The player will receive a warning for their future conduct, but no further suspensions. And I'd just like to highlight this accumulation of cautions it does also include distinct cautions dealt with through the SIMBIM process. We'll cover that in more detail in the later WebEx. Appealed under certain circumstances, um, provided they meet relevant uh, threshold and criteria. So all yellow cards can be on the grounds of mistaken identity only. Any red cards can be, also be appealed on the grounds of mistake of identity, and then all straight red cards, with the exception of abusive language, can be appealed on the grounds of wrongful dismissal. So just to run you through what that process actually looks like. Um, so for an appeal for mistaken identity, now I'd just like to clarify what we mean here by mistaken identity. To me, mistaken identity means that the referee has shown the wrong player the card on the pitch. When a referee reports their misconduct to us, um, they log into the whole game system, they create the match, and then they select one of the two teams that they, they want to apply the misconduct to. And it pulls up the entire list of players for that club. It can happen that the, the referee may have clicked on the wrong name by accident, or uh, so if there are multiple players with a so they actually he may have selected the wrong the wrong player. If you believe there's just an admin error uh, along those lines and the player and the referees just recorded the wrong name, please let us know outside of the mistaken identity process because we will um, contact the referee and see if that is just an admin uh, issue. To me, uh, mistaken identity, as I said, means that the referee has actually shown the wrong player the card on the field of play. That's obviously vital if you're thinking about a red card. So it means if player A has committed a foul and player B has been sent off, then obviously there's been a miscarriage of justice there. So an appeal for mistaken identity needs to be lodged to the county FA within three days of the game. Uh, that can be done either through the whole game system or by emailing us at discipline at barks-barksfa.com. Call through to the county FA office and we will look to help you through that process. For the appeals and that is 50 pounds for teams playing at steps five to seven and 30 pounds for teams outside the national league system the appeal is successful at the appeal you'll be asked to submit all evidence to us at that time the name of the player who the club feel should have received the card so that we can cross-reference that and we know where to apply it if the appeal is successful. And then please provide us with any other supporting evidence you can at that stage. Ideally, we're looking for statements from both players involved and any supporting statements uh, you may be able to find, particularly if they are from neutral observers or from the opposition. The case will always be considered by the end of that week and ahead of any automatic suspension starting. And that case is dealt with by correspondence. So no attendance is required or allowed by either the club or the referee is based purely on the statements and supporting evidence that we have available. Into wrongful dismissal, it's a similar process, but there are some slight differences, particularly around the timeframes. So for an appeal for wrongful dismissal, we need to have notification of your intention to appeal within two days of the game. You then have up to four days to provide us with the evidence uh, there is again a 50 or 30 pound appeal fee, same as for mistaken identity. And again, the case will be considered by the end of that week. And that is in the absence of the player, the referee and the club. 
I should highlight that for both mistaken identity and wrongful dismissal, the deadlines that have been listed, uh, the two, three and four day deadlines, are from the date of the game. They're not from the date that you receive notification of the cases. When you think that a suspension starts within seven days, we start this process as quickly as possible. We need to make sure that we can convene a disciplinary panel to consider the case by the end of that week. So we have to have all of the information to us uh, prior to that. Generally, if you're looking at a Saturday or a Sunday game, we would be expecting notification of your intention to appeal mistaken identity by the end of the day on the Tuesday and all evidence to us by the close of business on Thursday. This means we can get all of the paperwork out to our panel ahead of them considering it on a Friday morning. Now, for wrongful dismissal, the level of evidence that's required is significantly higher than for mistaken identity. For a claim for wrongful dismissal to be successful, the club must prove to the commission that the referee has made an obvious error. So this means it's not a question of interpretation of degree of severity of an offence. You have to prove that actually the offence in effect never happened and the referee was wrong to have uh, raised any kind of misconduct for it. Now, if you think about straight red cards for denial of goal-scoring opportunity, that is uh, where you, mo most of the successful appeals come in. Uh, when the IFAB, uh, who set the laws of the game, changed the regulations around wrong, um, denial of goal-scoring opportunity by foul tackle a few seasons ago, they removed the triple jeopardy threat that a player committing the foul would concede a penalty, get sent off and be suspended the following match. So the regulations are now that any tackle committed in the penalty area where the referee deems that there's a fair attempt to play the ball, um, the player should not be sent off. If you're able to demonstrate that actually it was a genuine tackle and genuine attempt to play the ball, the referee still sent the player off, you, are more likely, you may stand a good chance of um, having a successful appeal. At or for violent conduct, however, and the, the line of defence is that although you accept it was a foul, you feel that it was more of a yellow card offence than a red card offence. That is not going to be successful because that comes down to a, a question of interpretation of the degree of force that was used. Um, so it's not clear that the referee has made an obvious error if they've deemed that that tackle was used excessive force rather than just being a reckless tackle. I am going to do a practical demonstration just to try and take you through some of the steps on whole game uh, that we've kind of mentioned earlier on around the responding to cases and submitting appeals. So I'm going to log into, uh, we have basically created a dummy match and dummy charges for County FA this demonstration for you. Let's log into the whole game system. You will automatically land on your own personal dashboard and this is where you'll see that you if you have any unread notifications. It will show the date and the number of notifications. So these are the cases that we've created this morning and I've invoiced them directly so that I can take you through the invoice process. You can see we've got six notifications here and it prompts us that various offences and cases have you can mark it as red, and that means the next time you log in, it will no longer be coming up on your dashboard. It helps you keep track of what are the current cases. If you have marked a case or a notification as red, and you do want to go back in and see the, see the notification at a later date, or if you're worried that, let's say, another member of the club management committee has uh, ignored a notification, you can always go through into the section that says all, at which point you'll be able to see all historic notifications as well. On to the club dashboard. Uh, if you have unread notifications, you'll see that there's a, an amber box up here. It gives you a prompt again that you can go down to the standard notification of the main club dashboard. If you run multiple clubs, it, this gives you an opportunity to um, manage it on a club by club basis whereas that main dashboard will give you the notifications for every single club that you are associated with. Mark these all as red. 
and then hopefully if I come back up to the top, uh, refresh that club dashboard, you should see now that that says that we have no unread notifications at this stage. The disciplinary uh, tab down the left hand side will be where you want to go for your main club discipline dashboard and to get all of the information around outstanding cases and your disciplinary history for the season. Plans on it, it will show you any unacknowledged cases down at the bottom here. And up in this box here gives you your disciplinary history for the course of the season. This is broken down by first team and non first team offences. So if you run a larger club and actually you've got multiple teams, particularly if they're playing at steps five to seven, it just allows you to keep track of your first team offences versus uh, the rest of the club. Outstanding cases are listed on this dashboard. To acknowledge a case, uh, click on the case ID number. And that takes you through so you can see some information about what the offence was. So here we can see that it was a game between Barks and Bucks Office Demo Team and Barks and Bucks Office Veterans on the 11th of September, and it was a friendly game. It can't have been that friendly if there's this much discipline. And you can see that I have picked up a foul here for unsporting behaviour. And state when the response is due and any outstanding balance that needs to be paid. And you can click on the arrow by the side of that to see the breakdown. It's not been acknowledged but that this is my first portion of the season. The case, you click up on the blue acknowledge button in the top right hand corner. Um, every able to acknowledge a case, we need to have the player's date of birth and address. That just means that we're able to track their disciplinary history and any um, records for the same player on the system, we'll be able to flag that up and make sure that actually a player's record is transparent and is accurate and that actually if there's a player that is has been suspended for a high level serious offence that that player is not playing elsewhere when they shouldn't be. True to acknowledge, there is a discipline charge that will be required to be paid. Click OK, we'll take you through. Now you will get a prompt if you're not able to acknowledge the case. Um, the player details are incorrect as can be seen here. So in order to update the player details, just click on the player's name. Individual profile page. Click on update details and it'll take you through to that individual's record and you'll be able to update the system there. It is linked to, um, to Google Maps, so you just need to type in the postcode and the rest of the information will come from there. So I'm just going to pop the office address in. You recognize that one? Um, and then save the file and record. to that player's page. And on that player page, you can also see that individual's disciplinary record for the season. So actually you can go in through here to acknowledge the case as well, rather than have to go back to that main discipline tab. Finally, if I click on the case and then click to acknowledge, I'll still be prompted about the discipline invoice, but at this stage, I'll be allowed to go through and acknowledge the portion. And that first part of that process is complete. Only 14 days for caution, so I know I'm not going to get any late notices or late uh, late fees for failing to acknowledge it in time. To the uh, club's discipline dashboard, other cases we'll just quickly run through. You'll see that there's an additional caution here, uh, which has a, a line strike through it against Penny, and that the case ID ends in SOW. Now this refers to a stage one warning, which is uh, we've been introduced by IFAB again for this season, and it relates to cautions or red cards for members of the technical area. So in this case, we set Chris up and pretended that he is, uh, say, the manager of the team, and that actually he has, in this instance, clearly or persistently not been respecting the confines of the team's technical area. So the referee has cautioned him for constantly straying outside his technical area. For these cases, um, as the referee's decision is final for these charges. But again, it gives you the information relating to the case. Portion for the scene this season. It's a £10 admin fee as before. You can go ahead and acknowledge that case. And like once you have acknowledged a case, 
you scroll down to the bottom, you now have an option where you can uh, make a case directly from that main case admin page. This means if you don't want to wait for that invoice to come through on a Wednesday, or if you want to make on specific cases because you've received payment from the player or the coach for that charge, but there are other cases on that invoice which you haven't received payment for, you can do on a case-by-case -case basis. Simply tick to pay, gives you a breakdown of all the fees that are being paid for, and when you click on the blue button at the bottom there, it takes you through to our online payment portal. I'm going to take you through for the red card offence that was listed on the system. This game, having already been cautioned for foul tackle, I've now gone one step further and got myself a straight red card, in this instance, for serious foul play. Now that uh, there's a bit more information at the bottom here, and it's given me the sanction, playing that there's a three-match ban starting the 18th of September. That covers playing and refereeing. It's not a safeguarding suspension, and it covers CFA football only. So step five, football, the category for this is all midweek football. Listed as pending here because uh, we haven't reached the 18th of September. Once we do hit that, it, the suspension status will move to current. Um, it'll de contain details of eligible matches which have already been added to the system, which will go towards serving that game. More information, you could, um, or if you do want to download the formal case letter for this, you can do so at the bottom here. Maybe useful if you keep manual copies of everything, or if you want to be able to provide the individual player with the copy of the report um, if you're requesting payment from them at that stage. So you can appeal straight red cards on the basis of mistaken identity or wrongful dismissal. If you wish to do that, Rather than click Acknowledge, click on the Lodge Claim button up at the top and select which type of bill you wish to submit. Once you do that, it will take you again through to the payment system so that you can make payment on that immediately. And we will also receive the information and you can upload any evidence that you wish to, to support that claim. I'm just going to acknowledge it. And it shows that there is a fine of £25 in discipline. £15 payable in this case. Okay, won't acknowledge at this stage because I need to enter my player details again. Um, just to also explain that if you click on the drop down here now, you'll see that that £40 total is split between the fine and the discipline admin charge. It's very card that there is a three match suspension and they were showing up as pending, so it'll be starting in the future. If you want to go back to the main club dashboard at this stage, and you may have noticed when we came through onto here earlier that uh, there's a line up at the top here for suspensions with a drop down arrow. If you click on that drop down arrow, it will show you any current and upcoming suspensions, their start date and the end date. So if we look here at the suspension for my red card here, again, it gives you the details that this is TFA level football only, so step five and below, and all midweek football the 18th of September, but there is no end date listed. The reason there's no end date listed is that the full quota of the three matches haven't yet been added to the system. Uh, you may remember I said that the uh, cards will remain on the system until all matches have been added and that date has passed. Find a suspension match, very quick and easy process. Come through quickly to the matches tab here, and this is where clubs can go through and add and edit any suspension matches that they need to. Match, simply click up on the top bus, uh, new match button in the top right, select the date. So if we recall, the match was the, 18th, the 11th, suspension started on the 18th. There's one match added already, which was for the 20th. So if we say we're going to add another match, which is the 24th of September, We'll ask you to select which of your teams the suspension applies to or the match is playing in the match. So it was the demo team. I'll ask you to confirm is it a League Cup FA competition or another match. You select the league and it will uh, automatically play the league that you're listed in. This demonstration team, our league is referred to as friendly. And when you select team here, it brings up any other teams which have been listed as friendly teams. 
In this case, I'm going to add again the position with box and box office vectors and click create. It's on this that there is a red this, um, same suspensions with a drop arrow again. It's been created. You can click on that and it will show you any eligible suspensions which that match has been applied to. So we can see here that once again that match has been applied to my three game ban. Just going to add another game quickly. Uh, we'll do that for the 30th. Again, we'll say it's for the demonstration team, the competition against the veterans. Great. To show you that quickly, one was that once the match has been created, I should now be able to go. So when I click on the drop down button here, I now have an end date listed for that suspension. Shows the value of staying on top of those discipline suspension matches. If you if you are keeping that up to date, you'll be able to manage the suspensions. Your team manager will be able to see exactly when that player is eligible to play, um, and that suspension has been served. Special thing about suspension matches is that in order to count towards a suspension, it must be a fully completed match. So if it's an adult football, it must be a fully completed ninety minute game. Now, if a match is postponed, cancelled, or abandoned for any reason, whether that is an abandonment for misconduct, for playing, condi uh, weather conditions, or for uh, player injury, injury, let's say, or has been postponed by the league for another reason, whether that's, again, whether that's due to weather or congestion or conflicts, it's important that the club manages that process as well. So what we don't want to happen is that, let's say that fixture on the 30th of September gets postponed, I fail to update the system and suddenly it looks like we lose track of the fact that that I still have a one game ban to serve. The next game, let's say it's on the 4th of October and suddenly I played under suspension. So if you do want to uh, update the match for whatever reason, again, if you go back to that matches tab, under the match information, there are three buttons for cancel, abandon and postpone. We now say that this match on the 30th of September has been postponed from that list, I'm going to come back to the dashboard again, see that that end date has now disappeared. That final game again, let's say it's for the 4th of October. Select the, the team that it applies to. Play for veterans away from home. Just gone through nice and quick this time. Come back to the dashboard. It has updated automatically. If you go through to the individual case as well, you'll now see that all matches are listed and the suspension end date has also been updated on there. I wanted to quickly show you on the main club dashboard was this, the invoice section. Is right down at the bottom and we'll show you any outstanding invoices. So this shows the invoices that were raised for those three cases. You can opt to pay collecting multiple ones um, to save you having to do it on an individual case by case basis. Click on the payment button, it takes you through to make payments online. Once that payment is made, it goes against the cases automatically and those cases will be cleared and resolved. If you Missed a, um, a notification or a deadline for one of those has been applied. As soon as the late fee has been paid, any suspension notice on that will be removed automatically. It takes you through the process for adding suspension matches and for managing discipline on the whole game system. I'm going to click over to the main presentation now and take a look through some club charges you may well receive notifications for across the course of the season. You will receive charges for continued offences throughout the season by their players. Some of these consist of automatic charges and sanctions, which are immediately charged to the club, while others are considered on a case-by-case -case basis by one of the Bucks and Bucks disciplinary panels. Cases throughout the season, um, we show that that can be done through that discipline tab, and that you factor these charges into your internal discipline processes. So if, for example, you 
plays internally for every caution they receive, you may want to consider charging them a little bit extra just to cover the accumulation charges that are crop up particularly in the more senior age categories. You can therefore cover these additional fines through the different cases. First up are respect offences. Now these are for accumulation of uh, respect offences as listed by the FA. So it includes cautions for dissent, those um, administered through the Simbin process, for abusive language or gestures, and any proven misconduct charge. Now this is on a team by team basis, and the charges and uh, fines associated vary depending on the level of the team plays at. Stage one is for six offences, at which point uh, you'll just be warned as to your future conduct. Stage two is after accumulation of 10 offences. And for teams at step five, you receive £150 fine, step six, seven, £75 fine, and all other teams receive £50 fine. You receive 15 offences. The fine is double whatever you would have received at stage two. And if you go as far as reaching 20 offences through the course of the season, it results in a formal misconduct charge under FA Rule E20, which will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis by one of our disciplinary panels. There is a fair amount of difference there between the levels of fines that are imposed, and you'll notice this again in one of the later charges we'll cover. That's on the basis that teams operating further up the football pyramid expected to have slightly better resources, you begin to start charging gate entry for those kinds of games, uh, that kind of level, and therefore it's deemed to be still be a proportionate fine for the level of football involved. Charges that can be raised against clubs, uh, these are all result, these will result in a charge under FA Rule E20, uh, which is basically a, a catch-all rule under FA regulations that states that the club has failed to ensure that their players, officials, spectators have conducted themselves in an orderly manner. It will automatically be charged under E20 if any team within the club reaches a disciplinary points, and I'll cover those in a second. Uh, if any team reaches stage four respect sanctions, as we just explained, if the club as a whole has two misconduct charges proven which have led to the abandonment of a match, as a whole has four more incidents of violent conduct, so that includes red cards or misconduct charges for violent conduct, assault on a match official, physical contact on a match official, or assault participant on participant. And finally, if the club has two or more discrimination charges against a player within a 12 month period. that um, one of the charges relates to accumulation of 75 disciplinary points. Now these are not at all related to your league points, so you don't face points deductions or anything like that from your league, but every disciplinary offence is assigned a ranging from one point for a regular caution, all the way up to seven points spitting at an opponent um, for a red card for spitting at an opponent. Charge will be a minimum of five points, but a disciplinary commission does have the right to increase that if they deem it appropriate. So you may well see that if you have a proven misconduct charge for causing abandonment, around 10 points. 25 point threshold um, is, is an interesting bar to set on the basis that it's fair to expect a senior men's team playing you know 40 odd matches a season it's not unreasonable to expect them to hit that just through the accumulation of cards that come as a part of naturally playing a physical match Therefore, it is important that particularly for those uh, teams you do factor that into your internal budgeting as it is fairly likely that you will hit that 75 point threshold The final category to consider is multiplayer misconduct charges. Now these are raised if a team has six or more players cautioned or sent off in a game. And these are automatic charges you'll receive and automatic fines that are issued through the whole game system. 
again, it varies depending on the level of football you play at. So for steps five and six, the fines range from £150 in the first instance, all the way up to £600 if you receive four offences throughout the season. While if you're in the National League system, you're simply warned on the first instance and receive a £75 fine if you hit four, in four charges throughout the course of the season. Again, as I mentioned before, that's still deemed to be appropriate given the level of football played at, the level of resources for those teams. Going through the regulations um, and a moment off some practice and advice for dealing with this on a practical basis. Really, the, the responsibility starts with the team manager or a team secretary at the game. Um, it's a perfect opportunity after a match just to confirm with the referee which cards he has issued throughout the game and which players those cards have been issued against. This will uh, save any of the issues surrounding frustration issues that can come up where a card is just allocated on the whole game system against the wrong player. But it also will help just to confirm what the offences are that the players have been cautioned or sent off for. That becomes important because although there is an automatic suspension seven days after the game for a red card, the length of that suspension varies depending on the offence. Club secretaries then, our advice would be to at least monitor email, get into a habit of logging into the whole game on a Monday or a Tuesday, or if you're playing midweek fixtures a few days equivalent number of days after the game. By this stage, hopefully the cases will have been raised by the County FA because we'd have received the notice from the referee. But if you haven't had the, the cases raised at that point, please contact us. It gives us a couple of days there before the end of the week to contact the referee, um, make sure that that report is submitted so that we can confirm details of any cards and we're able to confirm any suspensions that may be coming up. When you think about the thresholds for the accumulation of cautions, again, those suspensions take effect seven days after the 5th, 10th, 15th caution is issued. So you want to be able to confirm that those, those cautions have come through and stay on top of any accumulation suspensions. Best practice would be to acknowledge the cases immediately. We have 90% of our leagues and about 75% of our teams to register their players now through the whole game system. That means that all of those player details, the date of birth and the address should already be on the screen. So the acknowledgement of a case can happen immediately. If it is one of those players that you don't have the details, you do still have the two weeks, uh, seven days for a red card, two weeks for a yellow card to gather the details and make sure you're able to acknowledge the case. Repress the money from the player. By all means, please go ahead and make payments immediately. Um, however, appreciate that's not always practical. Um, but once you've got received confirmation of the case, it gives you opportunity to explain the situation to the player and request that they bring the money perhaps to the next game or the training ses uh, session you have. You can then collect it from them at that first available opportunity and make payment online as soon as you've received payment from them. Now, the biggest influence and weight that you have over the player will be their playing time. So practice would be to offer a, a, a no pay, no play system, where actually if that player has failed to give you their money for a caution, whether it's a week or two weeks later, actually they, you withhold playing time from them uh, until you get that payment. And I appreciate that that is an ideal situation and it can be difficult to get uh, enough players to field a team sometimes. So clubs may also wish to look at other ways of managing that situation. We do have a series of one page guides on all of these uh, charges and processes available websites. And uh, the link is on the screen now, but if you just head to uh, the Barks and Bucks FA website and through the banners at the top, select rules and regulations, you will see all of these resources available. We've created effectively one page guides which take you through some of these key procedures some, and some of these key regulations and tries to explain them um, in real language as opposed to the, jar the technical jargon which is used quite often in the FA handbook. Of course, you can always contact the Bugs and Bugs FA um, either by email or by phone. We're more than happy to try and clarify any 
regulations, any suspensions or any procedures that you need assistance with. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of our second session, which will be held Thursday, 12th of September at 7 o'clock p.m. And if you have feedback or suggestions for future editions of BBFA support, please feel free to contact me. As I said, you can tweet us at BarksBucksFA using the hashtag BBFA support, or you can email me at alistair.k at barks-barksfa.com. We hope to have the next session available and recorded, certainly around the week beginning of the 16th of September. For watching this presentation, I hope you found it useful. And as I said, if you do have any issues, please don't hesitate to contact us at Bucks.